five minutes each, um, which isn't long, but we'd love to tell you far, far more, I'm sure. Um, so do ask questions. And if, and if anybody wants to contact us post the meeting, then Lucy's got all our details as well. Um, so ho hopefully you, you enjoy this experience anyway. Thanks, Lucy. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we'll move um, straight on then to James Hard staff from BAE Systems. James, if you want, just want to tell me when you want me to move on. Yeah, thanks Lucy. Right, good morning everyone. Um, James Hardstaff, so I'm the General Manager of the BAE Systems Bruff site. So just going to tell you, I guess, a bit about um, BAE Systems and then more locally what we're sort of doing at Bruff. So for those that don't know um, BAE Systems, we are a global defence supplier and uh, we like to think of world leading innovator. We do have positions effectively from the depths of the sea uh, right up into space across our various divisions and equally quite a growing presence within cyber security. Uh, our principal markets uh, are right across the world but again we do have really really strong presence uh, both in the US, the UK, Saudi Arabia and Australia. So we employ over 80,000 people across the world in over 40 countries you know, with, with a significant number of, uh, of customers around the world. I guess in terms of our sort of employee um, governance and, and social aspects that we do see ourselves as a really diverse employer that values inclusivity and we certainly create a supportive working environment um, for everybody and I guess this next point really is around why you know, as a company we are involved in various cornerstones around the country, around the country but equally why I'm really keen and why we're part of this from a broad point of view with the HALEP. So this is around us, you know, as a significant employer in the region, really doing more for our communities in which we work in um, for, for, for mutual benefit. And equally, you know, from a sustainability point of view, really important to everybody now. Um, so as a business, we are committed to being net zero in our operations by 2030 and going forward uh, within our entire supply chain by 2050. So again, lots of activity that the business is doing to ensure both in the products we deliver to our customers, but also in how we conduct business is sustainable now and in the future. Uh, next slide. So just a bit more locally um, about BA Systems at Bruff. So we do have a significant proud history. You know, we've actually been here on this site uh, next to the Humber since 1916. So you know, up until the point that we did actually close the manufacturing at this site at the end of 2020, we were, we think, the longest serving uh, aircraft manufacturer almost in the world in terms of sort of longevity. So the site itself is going through uh, significant change, um, say, since we closed manufacturing at the end of 2020. The last couple of years, we've seen a real big transition as we're moving purely into that sort of digital engineering um, space. And we've actually, for the first time, got a significant amount of growth um, on the site. Because of the opportunities that we now see um, outside in, in sort of around the world and as soon as we look at where we are with the new future combat air system and the and um, what the uk government's doing with both japan and italy then there's a massive amount of growth which will actually sustain us in probably into the next century is that bigger program and um, so you know i am looking at growing uh, the brook site footprint over the next couple of years by at least another hundred um, but that's just in engineering. Like I said, you know, although we are primarily an engineering company, um, we do have careers you know, right from our own media and communications people through legal, finance, project management, business development, you name it, you can probably find somebody uh, with that particular tag working in BA. So I say we do have um, multiple pathways into the business. Um, you know, we do say direct entry people. Um, but equally, we have a really, really strong early careers programs, both from direct entry graduates, but also our apprenticeship programs. Um, they range from, you know, um, sort of level level four um, technician apprenticeships right through to you know, now doing more and more degree apprenticeships. Uh, and equally, you know, no, no one size fits all. So just because you come in on one particular route doesn't mean that you you're going to stay with that for the rest of your career. Um, certainly some that we've been pioneering at the brush site recently is, you know, when we did close manufacturing, you know, rather than make a significant number of people redundant, 
even though they might have been working in manufacturing for 20 years, we've gone through a significant training program with them, uh, and now actually they're designing the, the new future fighter concepts. So it just sort of shows you that you, know, you can retrain, and you can literally um, support people to do things differently. Right, so I think that's all of my time, so uh, thank you very much. Thanks, James. Perfect. Excellent. And if anybody's got any questions for James, if you just want to pop them in the chat and we'll cover those um, at the end. Thank you. I'll pass over now to Helen Gibson from Agencia. Thanks, Lucy. Morning, everyone. Good to see you. Happy Friday. <laughs> um, just a very quick uh, five minutes or a couple of minutes from me. As we say, uh, it's Friday, the sun's out. <laughs> Time for a weekend after uh, this week. But yeah, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak to a number of you. Great to see you. Uh, in terms of our business, we're based in Hessel. We're uh, effectively a service business, um, and that is specifically in terms of uh, some real niche expertise in a couple of core areas. And those core areas, very simplistically, are around health and justice. Um, so our clients are uh, typically public sector clients working for councils, working for the NHS, working for government departments. But a lot of our work uh, and a lot of our clients are actually international clients. So uh, we've done actually over uh, 500 different contracts in over 25 different countries across the world <laughs> and that's in all sorts of countries from uh, Tunisia to uh, the British Virgin Islands to Moldova <laughs> and almost everywhere else uh, in between. Uh, the company is a family business and uh, we're 20 five years in the running. I'm second generation and managing director for the company. Uh, in terms of the involvement that we've got uh, with this group, um, it really sort of started in terms of an invitation from Lucy <laughs> off the back of uh, an opportunity to be an enterprise advisor at Beverly High School. And that was particularly exciting to me because as a former pupil there, the opportunity to go and uh, get back into school <laughs> and uh, meet uh, today's girls has been absolutely brilliant. And uh, just recently been able to get a bit more involved in terms of this group today. So really pleased to be here. Uh, as we said earlier on, very much passionate about uh, what we can do in terms of inspiring, encouraging, raising awareness, opportunities. Um, and certainly from our point of view, in some ways, we're uh, quite an unusual business in terms of the fields that we're operating in, because it is some very specialist uh, technical areas of expertise. And that might be uh, on the health side, something like dementia and helping organisations that are uh, dealing with challenges around things like dementia, substance misuse, um, or on the uh, judicial side, how to deal with things like war crimes, counter-terrorism, uh, improving uh, the caseloads in courts and that sort of thing. So very, very niche and uh, yeah, just an opportunity to raise awareness that there are sort of jobs and careers in some uh, quite interesting <laughs> specialist type uh, field. So that's what I hope to sort of bring in terms of a contribution um, and uh, very happy to help if I can. So enjoy the morning and uh, good to see you all. Thank Perfect. You. Thanks, Helen. Brilliant. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you. And Rob Jollins. I don't think Rob's been able to join us, Lucy. He's I know not. that he was, um, yeah, he wasn't okay. about. I will skip it then, other than to say that Vina Berger is one of our cornerstone employers. Um, I won't cover the slides because I'm not kind of 
that involved with being a burger, but they do make roof tiles. Um, and I think, Mark, you might know this, only when I was looking the other day, they're the biggest supplier of bricks, or they certainly make bricks anywhere. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and they've got um, a factory just outside of Brough. Um, but yeah, what we can do is actually after this call, I can share the slides with you all um, and then you'll be able to see um, what's in those. So I will just skip and we are now on to Angela from the William Jackson Food Group. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm not as scary as that gentleman in front of you right now. Um, that is our founder, Mr. William Jackson. Um, he uh, started our business in 1851. For those um, people that are definitely from the Hull area, he built a and created a shop on Scale Lane. He opened it on the afternoon of his wedding day. Uh, so he was a very, uh, very busy man that day. Um, we're a sixth generation business. A lot of family businesses don't get past the second or third generation. So we're very proud of our heritage. We will continue to be a family owned business. And we have generations seven and eight in the wings uh, waiting to come and join our business at the senior level. Um, so William Jackson Food Group, you will probably all have heard of or even smelt Jackson's Bakery on Derringham Street if you've ever been to the hospital. Um, and uh, what, we, what do we do? So who are we? So next slide, please, Lucy. A lot of people don't realise that we are not just the bakery. Um, so Abel and Cole, they're a base, they, we bought those in 2012 um, and they are an organic veg, predominantly veg, but you can do your whole shopping basket online and they will deliver straight to your door. Um, they are a B Corp business um, and they have their head office down in Wimbledon. Um, we have Bellazoo. Bellazoo are a Mediterranean ingredients business. Um, we supply a lot of uh, restaurants. So if you've ever been to Nando's and you are one of those weird people that like olives, um, they are the olives that are imported for, um, into the UK by Bella Zoo. Um, we also supply a lot of retail products. So um, preserved lemons, uh, rose harissia, uh, that kind of stuff if you go down that Mediterranean aisle. And then we've got Wellex. So if you've ever eaten out in a, a high end restaurant like the Star or the Pipe and Glass or you've ever been and had hospitality um, in a um, sporting venue, Wellex supply the very top finest ingredients to all those restaurants. Um, we acquired Wellex in 2019, the same as we acquired Bella Zoo. Um, so we are a business that has changed since owning the shops um, uh, all around the Hull and Northeast area to then having Crystal Cars, I've heard, and an IT solutions company, um, but we are now 100% focused on food. Um, and that really comes from when we started the bakery. Um, we started the bakery on Derringham Street. There's been a manufacturing site there since 1907, which is almost 100, well, it's over 100 years ago, but trust me, we've changed our machinery and the people have changed. So we have developed and grown. Um, but uh, interesting facts about that site in Derringham Street. There are actually three manufacturing sites within that site, um, two bread plant and then a third that does bread rolls and uh, tea cakes. Is it tea cakes, bread wraps, uh, Yorkshire rolls, however we want to describe it. Or you, and we also do uh, hot cross buns as well. Um, I'm not going to open it up to the floor to have a guess. I'll just tell you because I'm not going to be that Catherine Tate person. Have a guess, just have a guess. Um, we actually make around 1.8 million loaves of bread on that site a year. So that's just over 2 million a week. Um, we have another site down in Corby that makes another million. So we are quite large um, in terms of the bread world. So where does our bread go? So our bread goes into any of those sandwiches that you buy from Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Lidl. Um, we also supply the bread for Costa. We also make the own label bread for co-op. So if you buy any of their own bread and then we also make much to some people's delight, Lucy included, uh, the Yorkshire champion loaf bread. Um, and we have about 10 percent of the bread sliced bread uh, uh, market here in the UK. Um, we have our own uh, transport fleet. And last year, because we um, move so much bread um, and I've got a figure here and I had to Google to say how to say it because the numbers just look scary. Um, 
in the last year, we made 136,170,010 loaves. So about two and a half million loaves a week. Um, and each load, each bread is moved by one of our drivers. So our drivers have moved five times to the moon and back just from the whole site last year. Um, we make about 15,000 deliveries a day. Um, and I can confidently tell you that we make bread exactly the same as you do at home. We have no special formula to speed it up and we can't make yeast rise at any different times. I can also tell you that right now our technical team are working very hard with this high temperatures. Um, we have no special formula of making it uh, go any quicker or slower because of high temperatures. We have about 450 colleagues based in our hall site um, and they range from as you'd expect, the factory operatives. They come in as a tray operative um, at the lowest level, at the entry level, and then they can work all the way up to charge hand and shift leader, shift manager. We also have a very strong um, office staff. So we've got people from finance, HR, marketing, sales, uh, IT, and we have about 150 people that work within those offices environment. We have different entry level points, so we do recruit apprentices. This year is our first degree apprenticeship route start, and we've got two guys joining us from local schools who will be working with Sheffield Hallam University. We've also got a graduate entry point as well, and we've got graduates that work across the group. Um, and then um, we also have people who come in direct entry routes as well. So we have some um, young people who have joined us um, both in marketing and in sales and in finance. And we follow lots of different training pathways for those guys. So although we're an old business and we've been here a long time, we are definitely moving with the times. And if you're interested and you go down the A63 a lot, you'll see another one of our manufacturing sites. It's actually not a manufacturing site. It's a warehouse where we have to move a lot of our stock because we're landlocked and we'll continue to be at that site. We've had to expand. Because we're family owned, we're very private. So actually, if your guys do any research on us, we don't shout out a lot about a lot of the stuff we do, apart from playing rounders yesterday. And yes, we failed and we lost as a group, but the Jackson's Bakery team won, much to my disgust. Um, and then final slide, uh, Fiona. Um, and some of how we behave and how we act is based around our values. So we have a really lovely value set when we try and encourage our colleagues to understand what's at our heartbeat. And one of the ones that I love about our values is learn from mistakes. Uh, and yesterday, I can confidently tell you when I was playing around as I learned very quickly uh, that I was actually really bad at batting, but give, put a ball in my hand, I was fine. So my mistake was trying batting because I can't do it. Um, but what do we do to look after our colleagues? We pay our, all our colleagues at least the national living wage. Um, everybody has a performance review. Everybody has the um, ability to speak their mind through en employee engagement surveys. We also um, try and bring together colleagues together. We also give them the opportunity to have um, employee assistance programmes. So every colleague has got access to a doctor, every colleague has got access to a savings platform. So we're trying to keep up with the times and look after our colleagues as much as possible. And one of those things for me is great when bringing in younger people into our business so that we can support them the best way. <sighs> That's me done. Perfect. That was wonderful. Thank you, Angela. Um, and yes, I am a massive fan of the champion bread, although it's still hard to get from Sainsbury's in Hessel. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I believe that Alison from Swift has currently had to go out for a fire alarm. So we'll try and come back to her. Um, I will move on to Hull Citywide Partnership, please, Mark. Thanks, Lucy. Um, yeah, the Hull Citywide Partnership is quite, quite unique. Um, in fact, I've not come across any partnership like this um, before in the construction sector. So Hull's quite fortunate in that it's got four major construction companies working together under collaboration. Um, and actually, normally what happens in terms of housing development, we we work with a partner who has a piece of land 
Um, we negotiate the price of that land, buy that land, and then we develop on it. But with Hull, it's very different. We have a, a long-standing relationship whereby actually we integrate into the city's regeneration um, development plan. So um, if you want to pop onto the next slide, Lucy, I'll tell a little bit about the partnership. So we're four major construction partners. Keep Map Homes, who is predominantly a first time homeowner uh, developer. Strata Homes, uh, who are the sort of next step on, if you like, the three, four bedroomed sort of mid range housing developer. Persona are actually the building arm for home group housing association. So a lot of housing associations now, um, whereas in the past they were just a landlord, have now established their own housing development companies. And for home group, um, Persona is their um, their build arm. And what that means is that they they can build houses for commercial sale, um, but they can also then a, a number of their houses are for either um, shared ownership, um, which means that people that buy them buy half and then rent half, um, or purely for rent. Um, priority space are a commercial developer, so they purely develop um, commercial outlets. And the reason that they're really important for us is that, um, you know, when we're developing, we can have shops, um, nurseries, um, doctor surgeries, all those types of um, different outlets. So between us, we're quite, um, quite unique. We're very large in terms of commercial developers. Um, our supply chain, we've currently in Hull, we've got over 100 subcontractor partners. So, you know, thousands of staff working within the, the, the partnership. But what's interesting about construction is that when I first came into construction, I thought all these big, massive construction companies had loads and loads of staff. But a lot of that is is through the supply chain and it, and it is subcontracted. And most of those businesses are 300 employees less. So ranging from one man and his van, um, predominantly up to, you know, um, two or 300 staff at the very most. So quite small. Um, and as a result, you know, it's it's sometimes challenging to get them to grow. Um, but that's, that's my job in Hull. Uh, we've got challenging targets of 85% local labor, which as you can imagine, you know, not all of the supply chain is in Hull. Um, so we have to try and encourage those suppliers that we bring on to uh, bring on local people. Um, but we're doing that. We're about 74% at the moment. So on our way um, and, uh, and and growing. Um, we've currently had so far since 2016, over 100 apprentices uh, equivalent in terms of uh, working on our sites. We've got 100 more to achieve. Um, so again, very challenging targets, but that's all about bringing young people through into the supply chain and growing that capacity in Hull. One of the things Hull Council's really keen to get from the partnership is that circular economy where, you know, the, the contract value goes back to local people, local businesses um, and local jobs. So we're very passionate about that and really pushing to, to to maximize the opportunities. So again, when you're talking to your young people about their careers going forward, um, yes, the, the market is slowing because of the, the uh, higher interest rates, but certainly as developers, we're, we're not slowing down. Um, there's a massive need for housing in, in the local area. So we're, we're just pushing ahead. Um, and there's some great opportunities and actually a, a, a little bit um, like the, the, the previous um, slides, you know, we have such a variety of different um, roles in there. Now, and, and I was just Googling on Go Construct um, to pick some out. But, you know, 3D visualizer, I was like, oh, it's a 3D visualizer, um, you know, accounts, bid manager, ecologists. We've just brought on a new uh, new member of staff uh, within Keepmouts just specifically to look at ecology within the development sites. Um, you know, there, there's there's a vast variety of different roles that people 
wouldn't comprehend when when they think of construction is just tends to be the bricky joiner you know electrician etc um so you know i would suggest that you go and have a look at go construct um there's every possible job in the sector available and and again gives you a brief description and salaries which is always great for kids to look at because they want to know how much they can potentially earn um but one of the things that as a partnership were really important you know what's really important to us is about driving that diversity and inclusion we're historically seen as a very male uh, dominated sector which we are um but there is a big change and uh, we're having more and more females come and join the business, both on the background um, in terms of office based, um, but also in terms of site based as well. We've got some fantastic, we've just taken on probably about 14 months ago, Alice from Hull, who's um, a trainee bricklayer. She's she's doing incredibly well and certainly within the, the next sort of 12 months, will have completed a qualification and be, be earning you know, quite significant amounts of money. Um, we've got over 14% uh, of our site female ma uh, managers, are females, and um, you know we're pushing to make that more. We've got two board members of females. So again, the sector's not necessarily, uh, whilst it might be perceived as being very male dominated, we're working hard to try and change that agenda. Um, but yeah, take a look at the different roles and. Um, I'm sure that you'll be be as amazed as I was. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. Perfect. Um, I believe Rob, Rob Jollins from Wienerberger has joined. So, Rob, we, we skipped past your slides um, earlier, but I'll come back to them at the end if that's OK. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And I'll hand over to Matt from Different Resonance. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm in a bit of an opposition here as a cornerstone employer by the fact that I don't actually employ anyone. Um, but what we do is actually outsource and work with freelancers and other micro to small business owners. So I earn my own um, business, which is different residence, which is a content marketing uh, business. Um, started off as a freelancer in 2018, fresh out of uni and 10 limited in 2021. So I've been operating doing what I do uh, for five years now. Um, so we tend to focus on social media marketing, but we look at people's whole content strategy. So that includes videos, blogs, newsletters, all that kind of stuff, any digital marketing. Um, so yeah, as I say, I started straight out of university where I'd studied um, marketing at Hull Uni, but I'd also had a placement year as part of that and worked as part of the City of Culture team uh, here in Hull. Um, there are multiple routes into, into marketing. Um, there's apprenticeships, going down the degree route, uh, starting up on your own. The, there's so many different ways into marketing. The key skills that people are kind of looking for at the moment is creativity, teamwork, and the ability to do some form of analytics, analyze things. Um, as I say, similar to the other, some of the other cornerstones here today, I've, I kind of became one through being an enterprise advisor first. So I worked with Boulevard Academy, uh, advising the team there over the last uh, over 12 months or so. Um, we reason we got involved, I'm passionate about Hull and kind of helping the next generation because I'm also a governor at my old school at South Hunsley uh, and there I look after student voice and again linked to that uh, one of the projects I've helped the LEP with is the student voice project so some of you may be aware of that but essentially what we're doing is getting uh, students from a range of different schools, different backgrounds and hearing their experiences of careers in schools and trying to um, build a report that will be out uh, in the next couple of months for the first uh, year uh, to showcase what students think about careers in schools. Um, we will be running that project again next year. So if you haven't signed up this year, keep your eyes peeled. We'll be talking about that. And we'll also appear at the conference to talk about that as well. In terms of what um, I can offer to schools, obviously being a one man band, uh, time is precious and I can't get to everybody in the same way that some of the other larger organisations can. What I do try to do is offer more bespoke activity. So I don't have like a set pack of things that I do. Um, but if there's a particular student that's 
looking to go into entrepreneurship, especially if they want to be in marketing, I'm more than happy to have a chat with them at some point. Um, I've also created a video um, as part of the Careers Hubs. Um, they did a series of videos. You'll have seen the BAE one at the last uh, conference. One of them, I've done one of them. So again, if you've got any students who might just be interested, but at, at the stage where they want to have a chat, that video is available for people to have a look at. We have delivered sessions um, for schools um, around marketing. So we do a live brief um, where I use one of my clients as a brief and the students come up with marketing campaign ideas for them. And then also um, personal branding is a big uh, passion of mine. Um, so I love going and speaking to schools about schools, universities, colleges, all about personal branding and how they can make themselves stand out uh, in quite a competitive recruitment industry at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's a really quick whistle stop tour for me, but again, I'll be around for any questions at the end. So yeah, thank you very much, Lucy. Perfect, thank you, Matt. Excellent. Just to say as well, Matt's been integral in uh, the rollout of our Teams channel for the Careers Hub. Um, so if anybody's got any ideas or would like to send anything through, Matt's really, really good at, at keeping on top of that for us. Um, so thank you. Um, and I will hand over to Miranda at Cranswick, please. Yeah. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, my name is Miranda Spencer. I'm the Group HR Director at a company called Cranswick. Um, some of you may or may not have heard of Cranswick. Um, just to give you a little bit of history, Cranswick was started by a group of farmers in a place called Hutton Cranswick, which is just near Driffield. Um, they were supplying grain into the pig industry and realised that they could ma maximise on that supply chain um, by supplying not just the grain but the pigs as well um, and that's how this company started and then it's grown via acquisition since then um, to the point now where um, we are Hull's biggest employer um, and also the UK's biggest pig producer and farmer so as the company has grown um, again that's um, the benefits of having that end-to-end -end supply chain um, have, have proven their worth um, and so whilst we're probably known for being a, a supplier of pork products we also supply chicken products as well so we have um, a, um, a chicken production facility down in Eye in Suffolk um, and we also have chicken facilities in Hull as well um, and one of those is the home of the Muck Crispy Chicken um, which we are particularly proud of um, so um, we've been around for quite a long time. We've got about six sites in Hull, but we've also got sites all over the UK. So about 20 sites in total. And then, and as I say, sort of multiple farming opportunities as well. Um, people tend not to have heard of Cranswick, despite the size of the company. We've got about four, 14 and a half thousand people in the business now. And the turnover is about two and a half billion. Um, but still people haven't heard of the company because we don't tend to do many branded products. One of our only um, branded products is um, a hummus called Ramona's, which you may have seen in some of the major retailers. Um, but we will supply everything that you would associate with a pig. So that would be bacon, sausages, pork loin, um, uh, pork joints. We do um, sliced pork chicken ham beef we have a continental foods business that supplies feta halloumi um let's say the hummus uh, we do corned beef um, um like angela we do lots of olives um and we also have a pastry factory in malton in north yorkshire which supplies marks and spencers with them lots of fantastic pastry products so lots of pies um tart tart hands we do um some really great sausage rolls um, so a really diverse range of products supplying into all of the major retailers um, and some of the food out, outlets like Pret or Itsu. Um, so, so, so I suppose a little bit of something for everybody across the, across the business and, and as we've grown we've diversified out of just, just providing pork products. Um, I've been with the business 16 years now so I'd always wanted to join Cranswick having, having been in pig production for most of my life so um, Cranswick was somewhere that I aspired to be um, and the reason that I aspired to work for, for Cranswick was that they were known as being one of the best employers um, but also the best at what they did as well. Um, 
and we have fantastic culture. So it's not a hierarchical culture. It's a very flat structure. Um, when you come into the business, you come in as one of a team. Um, and it's just part of that culture that we we em we embrace you, and we we know that um, you're right for the business because of the Cranswick fit, not necessarily because of your academic qualifications, for example, but just because you join the Cranswick family and 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 you fit in and um, and you understand what we're all about as well. Um, and that's kind of the ethos that we use to introduce people into our business at whatever stage that might be. So we've got apprenticeship programmes all over the business. So that would be everything from a butchery apprentice through to engineering, through to HR, IT, um, operations. We do graduate apprenticeships as well, um, which I think are a fantastic way to get young people into our business. But um, you know, keep that academic learning going as well. Um, we have a graduate scheme. Um, we take on 12 to 15 grads and that's a, a generalist scheme where, again, young people come into the business, they decide what they like best about the departments that we've got and they make a decision about which suits them at the end of it. Um, and I think it's been mentioned before. I think um, James had mentioned it for BAE. Um, we are absolutely flexible in terms of people coming in and deciding that actually the role that they came in isn't right for them and being able to offer other opportunities across the rest of Cranswick. So we've had people move from finance to sales, from marketing to HR, from ops into commercial. Um, and because of the size of the business, we're able to offer a career um, which would normally, you know, people might leave and jump from one business to the next in order to get those career opportunities because of the size and the scale and the geographical spread of crowns. So it we're able to offer lots of opportunities in lots of different departments um, in lots of different areas. So we're really proud of that. Um, in terms of the Cornerstone Group, um, I'm an enterprise advisor. Um, and I don't understand why every company in Hull isn't part of this Cornerstone group. The opportunity that it gives us to link with you as careers advisors, teachers in every single school in Hull is just an opportunity that, um, you know, you, you couldn't buy. Um, the, the, the help that Lucy gives us to interact with you guys is, is invaluable. And, um, and I just hope that it continues to grow following meetings like this. We had um, a Teacher Encounters Day last week. Um, at um, at our poultry site, which was in, which was fantastic, and we had sixteen teachers, approximately. They came and had a chat with us, had a look around the factory, ha had them at crispy chicken, asked lots of questions, and I think they went away with on a real high, knowing that there are opportunities within our business and just understanding a bit more about food production as well, which um, which I think went down really well. Um, so 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 that's a little bit about Cranswick, but but as I say, for, from from your perspective, we're we're here for you, and we're here to provide the opportunities for um, the young people that you're looking after. So please, absolutely, you know, make make use of us and um, and ask the questions because um, if we can just continue to build the relationships with local schools and colleges, then that's a benefit for absolutely every single business that's sitting on this call now. Thanks, Lucy. Perfect. Thank you, Miranda. And I think there are some um, of our careers leaders on the call today that were at Cranswick for that visit um, earlier this week. So I'm sure they'll be keen to, to give their feedback um, in due course. Um, I will pass over to Stuart from Balfour Beatty. Thanks, Luce. Uh, morning, everybody. How long have we got? Five minutes? Yeah. Uh, we stretch for time. Five minutes, then we're going to move to Rob Jollins, then back to Alison from Swift. All right. Uh, I'm going to share the video. It's only one and a half minutes, so don't worry. It's not a Netflix series, but <laughs> it'll, rather than me describe Balfour Beta, a little one and a half minute video. So I'm OK to share, aren't I? Yeah. Sh shall I stop sharing? Uh, we'll try. Uh, yeah, if you stop sharing. Just tell me if this video has come up. Just say yes. Not yet. <coughs> have I got permission to share? Yeah, you should have. Yeah. No, all right, let me try now then. Oh, something's happening. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Just make sure the volume's on. Uh, it should be good to go. So this is us.
just stop sharing. So just some background to who we are. Uh, I'm not a mute, am I? No. Uh, we were established 120 years ago by two guys, one called Mr. Balfour, one called Mr. Beta. So I think they put a lot of thought into what they were going to call the company. Uh, they started off with a little cabling contract in London. And it, it's since grown. So we're a global company. Uh, we've got lots of activity in the UK. Basically, everything that you touch, see, feel, travel on, use, the chances are that we built it. So whether that's major projects, major roads, whether it's high speed <laughs> two, HS2, Hinkley Point Nuclear Power Station, Sellafield Nuclear Power Station, Thames Tideway, which is a huge 25 kilometer sewer going through the middle of London. And the size of it, you can get three double decker buses inside this sewer. So it's big stuff. Uh, in the UK, we employ around about 13,000 people globally, around about 23, 24,000. Um, Lots of stuff around carbon capture. One of the latest initiatives is reversing the oil pipes currently that are taking oil out of the and gas out of the North Sea. They're going to be reversed, and carbon is then going to be pumped back into the North Sea. Uh, that's going to be in the, your area, your neck of the woods. Um, and it was interesting when I was listening to Mark earlier around this perception of construction engineering. It, it is a white male dominated industry. We're improving our female percentage, our black percentage. We've got really ambitious targets to increase our female egg count by 50 percent by 2030, our black egg count by 30 percent by 2030. And every year we employ, well, this year, this September, we'll be taking on approximately 600 apprenticeships and graduates. And that it's kind of swinging now. We take a lot, a lot more apprentices than graduates. So we offer a range of apprenticeships. It's the whole horse from HR, legal, finance, commercial. It's not just design and engineering. Uh, full degree apprenticeships. We take people on at 18 post air level and we'll take them right through to chartered status. So by the time these people are 25, 26, they'll be fully qual qualified chartered engineers. Now, I think I, we call our graduates and apprentices under the brand, our early careers offer. That's our brand name. And I think it's an amazing offer that they get. So they start with us in September. They go through what we call some what kind of mandatory workshops. We do a lot around values, behaviors, understanding yourself um so we do a lot of work around insights you know if anybody's ever done insights you, you know what color are you for a blue sky thinker etc etc they do the breath air challenge we take up to the lake district twice a week in year one a week in year two uh, they get two pay rises every year um uh, and as mark will testify that the salaries in construction, engineering, built environments are they're not creeping up, they're shooting up. It's if you compare the salaries that we pay for our graduates on completion, you look at best parts of 45, 50 grand a year, and that's before people are 30 years old. And if you compare that with, you know, the medical profession, etc., it the demand is is it's ridiculous. Our order book at the moment is in excess of 16 billion. That's work that we've already secured, that's already in the bag. And then when you look at future infrastructure projects in the UK, there's not many go to people that the government can call on. There's yourselves, there's Kia, there's Costain, there's Stanska. Um, so there's a very, very desperate need to attract future talent to the business. Uh, so we need to do as much as possible to, to work with you guys to challenge those perceptions of the industry. One thing that we're, we're rolling out at the moment, and this is globally with every single employee from chief exec, everybody is our right to respect campaign. Uh, and this is around, you know, 
making people making people feel comfortable in the workplace, being able to call out um, inappropriate behaviour, and it's that line between banter and where it oversteps the mark. So we have a, a massive rollout at the moment of right to respect. Uh, apologies, I don't know who said it earlier, but uh, we spoke about values and behaviours. That's what we recruit on. You know, we, we don't expect young people to join our business having the skills and knowledge. You know, you give us a young person who's got that passion, that drive, that enthusiasm, we can provide the skills and knowledge and the experience. Uh, so, yes, whilst this might not go down well with the schools, but whilst grades are important, they're not really that critical for us. You know, you, you give us somebody who's kind of like, it's got that passion, that desire to work, then we will have opportunities for them. Um, sustainability and social value, just cut me off, Lucy, you're all right if I'm running out of time. Uh, you're on mute, so I reckon that's okay, I'll carry on. Uh, we, we, we have a saying within Howard Highway business, that anybody can build a road. You know, Mark will probably say anybody can build a house. It's that impact, that legacy that we leave behind with the communities that's really important for us. Um, I don't know what's happening with the screen here. Um, so we do an awful lot of work around social value, you know, whether that's supporting uh, community centres, whether that's tree planting, whether that's raising money. Uh, every single employee within Balpabita is provided with 16 hours volunteering every year and that could be all sorts it could be running coaching sessions um so it's, it's a real true value behind us i think i'm running out of time lucy you got somebody else lined up yeah is that all right Stuart? if we yeah, move of course on it to is. rob jollins but thank you of course it is Perfect, thank you. So if I pass to Rob from Fienerberger, please. Morning, everyone. Where am I? Can you see me? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was a little bit late. I opened the front door this morning and a crow flew in. So I was chasing that around with a shovel for half an hour before I could join it, Carl. Um, so, yeah, so from Wienerberger, that's our new training centre, Centre of Excellence that we'll build, which I'll talk about shortly. If you can move me on the slide, please. So, uh, so my name's Rob Jollins. I currently work as the engineering training manager for Wienerberger UK. Uh, so I myself served an engineering apprenticeship and worked in the steel industry. Uh, so the engineering apprenticeship um, I served was in fabrication and welding, and, and I was lucky enough to be able to complete a degree through my employer as well. So a, a little bit of luck and right place, right time. Um, but also I, you know, sort of completed my apprenticeship with quite high grades, and that was one of the uh, criteria that they set. If you pass with an high enough grades, you'll be considered for further and higher education. Um, so uh, that's what I did. So in terms of Wienerberger as a company, uh, we're the world's largest producer of bricks, clay, clay blocks and clay roof tiles. We employ about 1,200 people in the UK at 12 sites. And every year we take on 10 engineering apprentices. Uh, so some companies do this, some don't, but we guarantee our apprentices a job at the end of the apprenticeship. So notwithstanding attendance and behaviour issues, if an apprentice can make it to the end of their apprenticeship, we will guarantee them a position uh, within the company. So in this region, we've got factories at Broomfleet, near Brough, um, Goxhill and at Santoft on your way to Doncaster. Uh, and our partner training provider in this area is HETA, Humberside Engineering Training Association. We have a great relationship with them. Um, and our apprentices enrol on a four-year apprenticeship. We put an extra year on the end of it to give them the opportunity to make sure they're demonstrating their skills properly. Uh, and we enrol them on the MOE uh, standard as multi-skilled technicians. Um, uh, as you saw in the picture at the beginning, we've just finished our own uh, purpose-built training centre whereby we bring the apprentices from all over the UK, we put them up on uh, some residential training and we have our own Wienerberger curriculum that we deliver alongside the training that they get from the training provider um, in the first year. So there we can deliver stuff about raw materials, our process. Um, we have some very specific software that we use within our industry. So we can deliver training on that alongside the training they're doing with the, uh, with the training provider. 
Uh, and we was one of the first companies in the UK to achieve uh, a gold standard, excellent employee account mark uh, for apprentices, which was a joint venture between Make UK, which is a training provider and, uh, and, and lobby group, and Next Gen Makers, which is all about getting companies to sign up, take part in questionnaires and, and go through some vetting uh, and, and reach a standard in terms of the quality you can deliver uh, engineering uh, apprenticeships to. So there's no age limit on apprentices. It uh, when everything changed in 2017, it meant that there's no uh, there's no maximum age limit, no upper age limit. Apprenticeships start at level two, which is equivalent to uh, five GCSEs, uh, A star to C, our levels nine to four now, uh, and go all the way up to level seven, which is uh, about the equivalent of a master's degree. Uh, our engineering apprentices, I've said, complete a level three multi-skilled apprenticeship as as a minimum requirement. Uh, we encourage our potential apprentices and people who might be interested in working for Wienerberger to apply through HETA. So they do some initial screening for us and they present us with uh, a series of candidates, which uh, this time of year now, they start presenting back to us and we interview and do factory tours. Um, and, and then the, the individuals that, uh, that seem to fit best, then uh, we make offers to. Uh, we require our apprentices uh, to have four GCSE level four plus uh, grades in English, math, science, and one other subject which we like to be technology. Uh, and our apprentices start every September, meaning that the process for recruitment has has already started. Um, so if people would have been would be interested in working for Wienerberger, we always advise them speak to head to um, and apply through them in the first instance. Uh, so, so why would somebody want to choose engineering in general? If you're maybe not interested in Wienerberger, I would certainly encourage people to look at applying for engineering uh, for, for the reasons we've just heard. I, I read this somewhere and I, I keep walking around quoting it. Uh, so we, we know we've got a massive skills gap in engineering. Uh, but in 2026, 20% of the UK's engineering workforce reach retirement age. So whilst we know that doesn't mean that they're going to put the slippers on straight away, the, you can see there's a, there's a massive issue in terms of not only the aging population of the engineering workforce, but the fact if they did retire, that leaves us a massive gap. Uh, engineering covers a massive field of academic study and careers, but generally they all tie back to science, maths and DT. So if young people are interested in engineering, they're the subjects that I would encourage them to focus on. Average salary within engineering in Yorkshire number is 37,000. I think nationally it's 38,000. Um, so our apprentices, we pay 8% above the national apprentice minimum wage. So we pay slightly higher than the minimum wage. And when our engineers graduate, they graduate on something like 38, 40, uh, 38 to 40,000 pound a year. Uh, engineering apprenticeships start at level three and the four years in duration. Uh, and a level three apprenticeship is equal to A levels in academic terms. We get a lot of people who are more interested in, ac uh, in performing academic qualifications and think that apprenticeship doesn't doesn't match up where where it does actually. And the level of qualification you get um, is equal to to something else you might see. So that's been a burger. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Rob. And I will quickly move to Alison Swift, please. Uh, sorry about that, but we had a fire alarm, which wasn't a drill. So it was all, you know, all hell had broke loose, but apparently there was a faulty smoke detector in one of the offices that had gone off. Um, so, yeah, I'll just tell you a bit about Swift, if you could skip to the next slide, please, Lucy. OK, so Swift was founded in 1964 by Ken Smith, as you can see there on the picture. At that time in life, he was a sheet metal worker and he was building greenhouses and um, sheds from a unit down on Head and Road. One afternoon, he takes a walk around the site and he discovers that his neighbour is actually building a caravan. I don't know if I've got pictures maybe that need flicking through. This one, here we go. And that was the first caravan they built. So he saw that his neighbour was building a caravan and together they joined forces and they built the first Swift caravan, which was a Swift 10, which is what we've got on the screen there. The business continued to grow from strength to strength. Um, they moved out of the Head and Road site and they moved on to Dunswell Lane. Um, then sadly, on the 27th, I think it was, of November, um, Ken Smith did pass away quite suddenly. So if you just press again, Lucy, please. 
Okay, so the company was then taken over by his son, Peter. At that time in life, Peter was um, a, a rally driver, very competitive, and by his competitive nature, he wanted to grow this business to make sure it was the biggest and the best in the area. He wasn't satisfied with just building caravans, because if, if people know, the caravan industry quite often takes downturns, and he wanted to make sure that we were sustainable. So he started buying out all of the smaller companies around us. So not just caravan companies, we're talking of like camper van companies, holiday home companies, that kind of thing. And he created Swift as the giant that it is today. So we moved out of our Dunswell Lane site and we moved further down to where we are today, which is still on Dunswell Lane, but further down. And we are currently sitting on 106 acres. This plot continuously growing and developing all of the time. We've just put in a new um, million pound cafe. We're putting a new showground in. We're building a new line. It's just continuously growing all of the time. If you could just go again, Lucy, please. OK, so as I said, the did the. Um, Peter didn't want to be a one trick pony. He clicked on fairly, fairly early on that the, the the, the business could be quite unstable so he wanted to make sure that we had a finger in all of the pies if you like to keep us afloat when things go wrong so we built our caravans we build coach built motorhomes we build panel van conversions we build a crossover vehicle which is a really small caravan which is for people who are wanting to move out of their camper van panel vans kind of thing but not quite ready for a full-sized caravan um, we build holiday homes and lodges. So your holiday homes are the kind of ones that you'd probably go to stay for a week or so in like um, a, a park dean resort, something like that. And your lodges are the big double units that are put together. And that is where people can actually live all year round. So they're insulated differently and they they have the kind of furniture that you would find in your normal home in there. And we also have a glamping pod range as well now. Next slide, Lucy. OK, so the type of customers we have then. So we don't sell to Mr and Mrs Jones. You know, they'll never put you'll, you'll never see them popping down the line watching their caravan being built or anything like that. We sell into dealers and parks. So the dealers, they are kind of like car dealerships is your best way to describe them. They'll buy a range of caravans and they'll sell them on their forecourts. And then we also sell into parks. So this is like your holiday parks, like Park Dean Resort, that kind of thing. We have a number of contracts with those kind of parks. So, for example, people would maybe some sites they can have the caravan on there for eight years and some up to 11. So we've got a constant churn of vans going out to backfill those contracts as well. Every single van that we make has already been sold. So we don't we don't build to sell. We sell and um, we, we build for to product that's already been sold um, as well. So again, that is something that I think we do quite differently to a lot of our competitors where we're we're not, you know, we're not we're not behind kind of thing. Every single thing that you'll see built here is, is has got a home to go to. Wanna just skip to the next one? Okay, so um Swift cares about its employees. One of the things that we do here is we're not just about building building caravans and holiday homes. We're about building a community inside. We had a lot of feedback after COVID that a lot of people was feeling quite um, depressed, lonely, that kind of thing. And so we created something called Swift Active, which is um, a monthly event that we put on for our staff to take part in. We have put five side of football on. Um, we've done a go karting, fishing. We take part in Hull 10K every year. Um, we do escape rooms. Um, you name it. I think we've probably done it. We're taking part in the Hull three, uh, the Yorkshire Three Peaks, or not the Hull Three Peaks, the Yorkshire Three Peaks as well. And again, it's voluntary. An email goes out every Wednesday called Wellbeing Wednesday, and that just tells you what the agenda is for that coming month, and then you can book onto the things that you want to do, or if you if you don't want to get involved, again, it's perfectly acceptable not to. Obviously, all of the apprentices are involved in that as well, but we also have our own, so as a team with our own budget to do things with the apprentices. So, for example, we put on um, a, um, a Christmas party for them where we took them all paintballing. And just imagine we had 70 odd apprentices all paintballing. It was manic, but it was great as well at the same time. And we're also taking part in like the soapbox derby this year as well. So we've got them in the academy today building their soapboxes, which is just really great to see. We also, so that's our internal community, but obviously as well, we also want to make sure that the external community is looked after. We're a massive company in, in the local area, if you like. We employ 1,500 people here. So again, if we, we kind of look on that as 1,500 people are employed here, that's 1,500 
families, 1500 plus sets of friends. We touch a lot of people's lives. So we want to make sure that we've also got a good name around the community as well. So earlier on this year, we if it was like around about Christmas time, we built some sports cars that had been donated for local schools. As you can see, the apprentices built them. And then we took one of the apprentices around to the schools with the technical trainers as well, so they could deliver them. And again, that was a really nice experience um, to see the joy that that brought. We, we support Raise the Roof, which is a homeless charity, and our apprentices took their soup van kitchen and they completely stripped it back and refitted it with all new stuff as well. And that was their project to do, which was another great thing for them. And then we build every year. We, we, we take part in Save Our Swift and we build holiday homes for Swifts because they're endangered and they go around all of the country and they're put up and hopefully that will that will help grow um, the Swift colony. Can you do the next slide, please? OK, so our development options then. So we offer a level two engineer engineering operative apprenticeship and a level three engineer fitter. We go through, we take um, students on from 16 and above. They have a day release at college and upon successful completion, all of our apprentices will also receive a full time permanent role at the end of it. They also come into the academy that we have on site every Friday and we do our own um like lessons life lessons with them if you like so for example we invited Paul Spence in and we, we do, did like one punch kills so we're educating them on, on on fighting and messing around on how bad it can be that kind of thing drugs and alcohol um mental health awareness for young t young adults so we, we we also put together like an internal curriculum as well which is done by our business admin apprentice um, our level three engineering operative, sorry, our level two engineering operative, if they want to, could then move on to the level three engineering fitter, which could then lead on to your level four HMC or, engineer, or manufacturing engineer. And we also run a scholarship program as well every three years, um, which is electrical or mechanical engineering. OK, so our applications, they open in February. We normally do it in time to open up with National Apprenticeship Week. During National Apprenticeship Week as well, what we do is we invite schools onto site with their teachers and we normally do like site tours so that the kids can actually see what it is we do here. Um, and then they get a feel for the business and whether it is somewhere where they would like to work. Um, we have our closing date normally as the 31st of March and then we'll start our first stage interviews. It is a three stage process. So the first stage is on site with us, very informal. They come here, they get another site tour. They have like a, quite a fun informal interview just so we get a feel for the person. They then go to, the, to our partners, which is Hull Tech College, and they do their college assessment with them. And then we invite them back to site for a third stage interview, which is a full day where they, they're carrying out various tasks throughout that day, individual tasks, team building tasks, that kind of thing. And again, we, we were obviously reviewing them throughout the day and seeing how they would fit into our business. And then for those who are successful, they will be offered um, an apprenticeship with us. Again, we also stay in line with the um, academic year. So our apprentices start in September to coincide with the GCSE results for like the younger um, the younger applicants as well to make sure that they get the results that they need and then we take it from there says oh i've got another one <laughs> here we go <laughs> all right so we do have other opportunities and other apprenticeships as well so like i said we've got um a level two finance apprenticeship that is just open this year and we're looking to fill that we also have a level two warehousing and storage apprenticeship level three business administrator um, level three health and safety and environment apprenticeship, a level three installation, electrical and maintenance electrician, and a level three advanced furniture and CNC operator. We're also introducing a level three spraying or car vehicle damage, but we, we're using it for the spraying side of it, the apprenticeship as well. And for anybody who would be interested in applying, it would be to go onto the Swift Group's website or we also the via log on to move on as well. So all of the applicants come directly to us and we make our selection from there. Perfect. Right, oh, Thank you, That's Alison. Excellent. Perfect. Excellent. So I'll come back um, so that I can see everybody. I don't know if anybody's got any questions that they want to pop in the chat or whether you want to unmute yourselves. Um, what I can do is I can share these slides with everybody afterwards, if that would be useful. 
Um, if we don't have any questions, then can I just say a big thank you um, to all of our employers that have, have joined us this morning. Um, and for those of you that are coming to the conference on the 28th um, of June, you will have more of an opportunity there to hear about some of the cornerstone work. So there are some questions going through. So yeah, we can send the contact details here, Lee. What I would say is all of these employer are on the Teams channel. Um, so actually, if you wanted to reach out to any of them, uh, they are on there um, and then they will be able to come back to you directly. But we will share contact details with you. Perfect. Well, I'll let everybody go. I think we've run slightly over time, but thank you very much for your time today. Um, I think you've all got my